every time you come, right, we are not the same. We are being changed. We are being transformed. The word of God is what grows the believer. It is not how long he has attended church, right? It is not whether he has a title in church. It is the word of God, the word of grace. That's how we are built up. So this month we are focusing on resolving identity crisis. I found out that a lot of believers do not actually know what God calls them. So last week I began to say that uh, in this kingdom, it is what the father calls the son or the child that he answers to. You don't answer to what you feel like. You don't answer to what society calls you. You answer to what your father names you. And we, we went through a couple of scriptures, right? Uh, we started from Genesis. God says, let us make man in our own image. Not the image of any other person. It's after our likeness, our nature. And I'm going to get to that quickly. But you see, uh, there was a story in Genesis about Jacob and Rachel. The Bible said that Rachel was about to give birth. And while he was doing that, it, it was so painful. He had so, she had so much sorrow. So she decided that the child would be called, who remembers? Benoni. Benoni means the son of my sorrow. Terrible. She wanted to name the child according to her feeling. She wanted to name the child according to her circumstance. But guess what Jacob did? Jacob said, no, he shall be called Benjamin. Do you know the meaning of Benjamin? The son of my right hand. The son that is beloved. The son that is accepted. And I mentioned to us last week that the right hand in the scripture is not this right hand here. It is a metaphor for beloved. It's a metaphor for acceptance. So you hear the Bible says that Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He is the beloved of God. And that's where you are seated too. Hallelujah. Amen. The believer is seated in Christ in the beloved. He is seated in the place of acceptance. Praise God. Hallelujah. You remember in the book of John again, the Bible said the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and said you are going to have a child. And because he was doubting it, the guy pressed the mute button on the remote control and Zechariah couldn't talk. Nine months later, it was time for the baby to be named. The family said, we're just going to name him after the tradition. No, the believer is not a traditional person. The believer is not a cultural person. The believer is not a societal person. You are made out of heaven. Your citizenship is not of this world. It is from heaven. So when the angel came to Zechariah, they brought a name out of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. What we answer to is not what the devil calls us. It's not what we feel like. It is what Abba, the father, calls us. So when the angel came to Zechariah, they brought a name from heaven. Say, this guy is not after the old stock. This guy will be called John. So because the father was mute, the family members called the mother and said, just name him Zechariah. I mean, he's Zechariah. In fact, you can name him Zephaniah. He, he's the <laughs> and then the mother said, no, 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 not so. You must come to a point in your Christian knowledge that you know when to say, no, not so. Praise God. Hallelujah. Circumstances want to say, this is who you are. You say, no, not so. I have looked into the scriptures. I know who I am. I know some of you sing that song, I know who I am. But the question really is, do you know who you are? In the face of circumstances and situations, can you stand up with audacity and say, this is who I am in Christ Jesus? So eventually they gave a writing part to Zechariah. And said, tell us the name of your child. And he said, his name will be called John. It's a new name brought out of heaven. Not a name of culture, not a name of tradition, not a name of circumstance. And that's how we operate in this kingdom. We answer to what the Father calls us. If the Father says you are holy, you are holy. If the Father says you are righteous, you are righteous. It's not that, oh, I woke up this morning, I don't feel like I'm righteous, so I'm not righteous. No! Whose report will you believe? It's not what the people call you. People can have your report and all that. No, but you believe the report of heaven. Praise God. Amen. So please note that. We're just going to continue this morning. And that message is also online. So we can send it on the church WhatsApp group. 
so that you can get up today. Let's move to the next episode this morning as we resolve this identity crisis. Genesis chapter 27, verse 20. Just to light on that scripture, I will explain some things uh, on that story. There is a story in Genesis chapter 27, which is an interesting one. If you are a student of the Bible, you must have read it. Uh, two sons were fighting for the battle. Praise God. They were fighting for the blessing. And we're going to find out what the blessing is. But let's look at 2720, uh, Genesis 2720. I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. Isaac asked his son, How in the world did you find gain so quickly, my son? He said, Yahweh, your God, caused it to come right to me. He replied, Your God caused it to come right to me. The one that brought it to me, the one that made it possible for me to become the recipient of the Father's blessing is God. Please mark that in your mind. You see, there are things that God only can give you. And if you try to give it to yourself, you will not make it. Let me start from that. That's a very profound statement that you need to hold in this house. There are things that only God can give you. If you try to give it to yourself, you will never make it. And critical among that is the nature of God. The nature of God is not achievable. It is only receivable. Please notice. The nature of God is not achievable. It's not something that I can run to the field and do kitty kitty, do kata kata. You know what I'm talking about. You cannot run in the arm of the flesh and possess the gift of the spirit. Are, are you following me this morning? What is the nature of God? It is righteousness. The nature of God is righteousness. And you cannot possess righteousness by trying. How many of you are tired of trying? You try. Oh my God, I tried in my life. You know, I was born in the church. I was born to pastors. And I grew up in church. And they gave us commandments. And we labored. We, we struggled. We tried. It didn't work. Until we got to a point that we understood that except God brings it to you and you receive it as a gift, you cannot become it. That righteousness is first a being and not a doing. That's why you are a human being, not a human doing. <laughs> is somebody following me this morning? Yes, you are a human being, not a human doing. You receive, you see, the reason why you are different from a monkey this morning is not because you did anything different from the monkey, it's just that this is your nature. The reason why you're not jumping, right? If you put a monkey in this place, you'll be surprised. I mean, look at poles everywhere. The guy will be jumping. It is nature. Man does nature. Creation does nature. Praise God. Hallelujah. Apple fruit cannot give back to orange. It is not possible. Mango tree can never give back to apple fruit. It is not possible. We bring forth after our own kind. What you are producing is a product of your nature. So what God is doing is that in making man, he made man in his own image. So you don't struggle to be like God. We don't achieve that by struggle. Hallelujah. Uh, so, just, I'd like you to follow me with an open mind because as we study the scripture, you will see the light for yourself. It's deliverance. Deliverance is not laying hands on you. It is imparting the knowledge of the word of God to you. You will know the truth and what shall it do to you? It will set you free. You have to know it. So it's a teaching. I'll give you pastors after my own heart who will teach you wisdom and understanding, knowledge and understanding. It is taught. It cannot be imparted. I was dealing with something as a young believer. I even went for deliverance, you know. Three days dry fasting. After seven days, I was back where I was. <laughs> I was, I mean, I fasted. I prayed. I, see, there is a place for prayer. There is a place for knowledge of what God has done for you. If you don't get it, you will just be struggling and then you will be telling people this thing is a scam, it's not working. No, the word of God works. Righteousness is not achievable, it is receivable. If you give back to a child, your DNA flows in that child. 
you will just naturally find out that your idiosyncrasies, your attitude, everything that is in you just shows up in that child. The child is not trying to be like you. He, he or she received your nature by virtue of the fact that you are a spirit. Are we following on to that point? Yes, sir. So, you must understand that um, when God says, come, let us make man in our own image and after our own likeness, the likeness and image that he's talking about is his nature. So, the ideal man, the accurate man, is the man made out of heaven after the image and the likeness of God. So, he is not struggling to be like God. He is just God upon the earth. Are you following me this one? He is God upon the earth. Jesus didn't struggle to live the righteous life. He just lived the righteous life. As the accurate son of God. Are you listening to me this morning? He was just living the life. Because that life is in him. The life is not something you act. It is something that is in you. And you just live it out. So we began to say last week that... Uh, You've got to know who you are in God, who the Father called you. And we spoke about the fact that how you enter into this identity is by revelation. You remember I spoke about Jesus asking his disciples, who do men say that I am? Uh, some said you are Elijah, some said you are Isaiah, some said Jeremiah, others said John, some one of the prophets. Who do you say that I am? Out of all the disciples that have been following him, it was only John that had that revelation. Thou art Christ. The son of the living God. Jesus said flesh and blood. As, so you see what we come to do in church is not human knowledge. It's not. Church is not 32 keys to be like God. <laughs> you have to find out in Jesus. The word of God, right, is in the Bible. Let me say this to you. The Bible, right, and the word of God. Your Bible can fall down but the word of God cannot fall down. Because the word of God is a person. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and God was the word. If you read John 1, you see who the word is. He is Jesus. So the moment he caught the revelation of Jesus, the believer's identity is in the revelation of Jesus. I am in him justified. He is in me glorified. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. So when I see him clearly, then I see myself. To know your identity as a believer, you don't look at yourself. No, you look at Jesus. Because your real life is not this one. It is the one that is hidden in Christ, in God. Are you following me this one? Where we draw our strength from is not in what we can do. Well, I, can, I can fast, I can do that. No, that's not you. The you is in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. He said be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. The Lord that he's talking about there is Christ. You are only strong in Christ. Outside of Christ, all of us we are useless. If they take out the nature of Christ in us, you will see the beast in us is a loud, terrible beast. We are the most selfish, most prideful, most Angry, are you following what I'm talking about? Mm. What makes us different is the life of Christ in us. Mm. That's our identity. So you will never be good enough as long as you are outside of Christ. That's one of the points I need you to know this morning. Young man, you are trying to walk in righteousness. Let me say this to you. You will never, you will never be good enough for as long as you step out of where God put you. God put you in Christ. That's when you are perfect. That's when you are being perfected. Praise God. You must know that you are perfect, yet you are being perfected. But the moment you step out of that Christ and you say, I want to get to town and, and see what's happening. I want to try things for myself. You will never be good enough for Jesus, for God. You know what the Bible says? The blessing that they were fighting for in Genesis 27, he's not car, he's not house. You know what the blessing is? He's the blessing of righteousness. Man of God, how do you know? Psalm 32, verse 1 to 2. Let's read. Psalm 32, verse 1 to 2. 
Because if you read that story, you will notice that Isaac didn't give Jacob anything tangible. It was an intangible blessing. It was not car. In fact, it was Esau that was at home that was not blessed, that was left with the physical properties of Isaac. Can you follow me? Jacob got nothing tangible. So the blessing of the Lord is not something that, oh, uh, physical cash. No, God is not spraying money. Praise God. Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord is the nature of God. Right? Look at Psalm 32. I'm reading the Amplified Classic. He said, happy, fortunate, to be envy is he who has forgiveness of his transgression continually exercised upon him. Whose sin is covered, blessed, happy, fortunate, to be envied. He is the man to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. There is something that God is doing here. Look, if you go back to Genesis, you remember that when Adam tried to be like God, he became naked. So it, it means that before that time he was not naked. Something was covering him. He was the glory of God. He was the gift of God. He was the way God created him. But the moment he became stupid enough to step out of the image and the likeness that God made him, he became naked. Then he went to cover himself with leaves. That's self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is such a foolish thing to do. How can you cover yourself with leaves? Assuming that you pluck green leaves in the morning, by the time sun beats you in the afternoon, by evening you're already naked. That's why no matter how people pretend to be religious, when you shake them, their real identity will come out. Are you following me this morning? The Christian is not a pretentious person. He's the person that has been forgiven who has been covered with the righteousness of God. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. So you find out that Jacob was not perfect, yet he was the beloved of God. Is somebody listening to me this morning? You will find out that David was not perfect, yet he was the beloved of God. Continuously, God forgave their iniquity, kept on building them up. That is the work that God is doing in Christ in us. Uh, somebody say, oh, he, he, he has this weakness. Yes, we know he has a weakness, but God is working on him. God is not saying, bring your own righteousness. No, it's a gift. Righteousness is a gift. The father says, come my son, I want to bless you. He says, father, what do you want to bless me? I want to give you my dream. Are you listening to me this one? I want to give you my nature. Bless. Let's go to Romans. Romans, and you will see what I'm talking about. Romans chapter 4. I want to read from verse 4, from verse 1 to verse 8. Let's see the blessing that Abraham found. Because when you go to Genesis chapter 12, and you say God called Abraham and blessed him, some people think, oh, it, it is money. No, no, no. Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. If so, what shall we say about Abraham, our forefather? You mind me speaking? What did he find out? Abraham found out something. I'm going to show you this morning. How does this affect his position and what was gained by him? For if Abraham was justified, established as just by a quitter from guilt, by good works that he did, then he has grounds for boasting. You know why? If you are doing good today, you cannot boast. For somebody like me, having overcome my sinful nature, I, I know the things I used to deal with, though, that in fact, you know the terrible nature of this thing. The more you struggle, the more you sink. It's like I'm the only one that is born again. You have not expressed it. The, the more I struggle to please the Lord, the more I stand. And it's a natural principle. If you are sinking and you are struggling, you will be sinking the more. You cannot say to yourself, my brother, calm down. Let me tell you, I never say calm down. <laughs> you come to receive the gift of righteousness. It is a gift. Eventually, you will still do the works of righteousness, but you cannot put the cart before the ox. Yeah. Is somebody following you? Yeah. You cannot do the works of righteousness without receiving the gift of righteousness. Just like you cannot become a lawyer if you have not gone to the law school. Mm -hmm. If you suddenly open a medical shop now without going to medical school, you are a conductor, you are not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. You are a choir. We must first receive the gift of righteousness 
When it becomes your nature, then you can do the works of righteousness. So what did Abraham find out? He said, there is no ground for boasting. No, not before God. For what does the scripture say? He said, Abraham believed. Somebody said believe. believe. Abraham believed in God and was credited to his account as what? Righteousness. Some of you have credit card in this system. That is not your money. I used to work in the bank. Sometimes after a good holiday, long weekend, people are spending money in their credit card. Then they just call us and say, ah, hey, my money, my mother, like, it's not your money, it's the money we credited to you. <laughs> <laughs> you are using it on our behalf. It's our money, it's the bank's money. Abraham believed. It is not that Abraham did righteousness, no. Abraham believed and it was credited to him. The word in King James Version is reckoned. God did an accounting from heaven and he credited his righteousness into the account of Abraham. So be using that one. He gives us his nature. So there is nothing to boast of. What is righteousness? It is right living and right standing with God. Amplified classic, put it there. But not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed, trusted in God, and he was credited to his account as righteousness, right living, and right standing with God. So when I say I have right standing with God, it is not because in myself I am perfect. It's a lie. If you are perfect, please help me lift up your hands so that we do deliverance for you this morning. It means you are a pathetic, pathological, terrible liar. Come on now. Is somebody listening this morning? Bless him. He's a liar. God is not looking at that your acting. He's looking at your heart. <laughs> he, you know what, what David said? He said, all oh, your righteousness. He says, feel the wrath. You are like Adam running in the garden. And lion is looking at your body and saying, look at this guy. He has left the glory. He's now using leaves to cover his nakedness. Look, imagine how the monkeys were looking at Adam when he changed from the righteousness of God and now put on his self-righteousness. Like gorilla, come, come. And also, but gorilla, come. See our uh, principal. He's like this guy is now stupid. <laughs> He's naked. Look at his nakedness. That is how you become when you put on your self righteousness and you are acting for God. You can't act for God. You know what David said? Even if I go to him, he said, you, you can see me there. He's searching your hearts. He's not looking at your face. Righteousness is not that, oh, I didn't do my hair. No, I didn't use makeup. That's not righteousness. You are just wasting your time. I put your powder and look good. Praise God. Righteousness is a gift. It was credited to his living. Right standing with God. Wages are not counted as a favor or a gift, but an obligation. But to one, not walking by the law, trust in him who justifies the ungodly. Praise God. God justifies the ungodly. His faith is credited to him as righteousness. So, the first thing we need to understand in our identity is that faith is how we get our identity. It is by believing in what the Father calls us. God says, because you have accepted Jesus Christ, you are righteous. You say, yes, sir. How many of you know you are righteous? I know your mind is still telling you that you did something last night. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. If you get what I'm talking about, you will be delivered. I am telling you. I'm not teaching you old white fables or something I've not experienced. I know myself. There is no goodness in any one of us. No goodness at all. Except we just put up an appearance in church and we are like this. Bless you. But you say, lie. Except the sun set you free, sir. You are not free. From the bondage of iniquity. The bondage of sin is so strong that no matter how you strive, your nature will show you that. Oh, you can't cheat nature. You know, many years ago, I was traveling in Nigeria. I took a bus who we were going to Lagos. So we picked a guy from Ibadan. Uh, no, I think it was, I was going from Lagos to Adorikiti. We picked a guy at Burger, and as we were going, he sat at the back of a reverend gentleman. We later found out that the man in front was a reverend. But this guy at the back was sleeping, you know, and dozing. So he went forward the first time, gave the man in front a head, ah, ah, 
And he was an elderly man in front. This guy at the back was a young, agile man, very strong. When he gave the man the air boots at the first time, you know, he was being nice, reverend. He just said, this guy dozed again and came forward and gave the man another air boot. <laughs> you know, he was, he was going over the, over the fence. The third time he gave it to the man, the man shot it. You know what the guy at the back said? He said, I can't cheat nature now. <laughs> <laughs> have you, I mean, some of you who are students before, have you ever been trying to study and sleep came upon you like a thief? Yeah. No matter how you struggle, that guy that has no gun, he overpowers you. That is called nature. You cannot cheat nature except God activates a divine nature within you. Is somebody following me this morning? Yeah. Yeah. You cannot live by your own righteousness except you receive the righteousness of God as a gift. You see, the law of gravity will always bring you down, except you begin to operate by a higher law. So the Bible talks about that the fact that you as a believer, you are no longer living under the law of sin and death, but you are living under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So there is a spirit of life that activates our mortal body to live above sin. There is a spirit of life that animates your heart to do right thinking. You will never win that fight by struggle. Praise God. He says, so does David congratulate? What we read in Psalm 32 is what Paul is referencing in Romans chapter 4. He said, does David congratulate? Help me congratulate your neighbor. Say congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, because you don't know what I'm talking about until you get it. This is something to rejoice about. Because in yourself, you will never be good enough for God. Are you listening to me? In yourself, you will never be good enough. So David said, congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations, my friend. Congratulations to the man. And then he pronounces a blessing on him to whom God credits righteousness. Hallelujah. You have a credit. It is you that you are not using it. And you see, there is nothing that is painful than for you to have suffered only to find out later that what you suffered for has been paid for. I tell you the story of a man who entered business class. They paid him, you know, for business class and he entered the plane. But he didn't know that business class comes with everything, not just food, but you can relax the chair. He, he, he looked around and saw others sleeping, but he didn't know that he could bend his chair and relax in that business class and sleep for good. So when the trip was done, they now told him that he could also have done his chair like that. He felt bad. You will feel bad when you eventually discover that you've been suffering for nothing. You've been suffering guilt, condemnation for nothing. That God was not condemning you, you are the one condemning yourself. You know, some of you think that it is by crying and bringing cat out of your nose. That's why God now forgives you. Yeah. Hey, uh... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, eh? Sorry. You will get it. If you allow God to teach you, you will get it. It is not. Sin is not something that you can say, I'm sorry for. If it was by, I'm sorry, Jesus wouldn't need to come. Are you listening to me? If sin could be sorted by... I cried, I now rolled on the floor, I went to the south, I went to the east, my cloth is now dusty. <laughs> and I said, mm -hmm, now, God, I'm okay now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. God had to punish your sin upon Jesus. It is by punishing your sin upon Jesus that he now declared you no guilty. So you are no longer guilty. So what he did was substitution. He took your sin, put it upon Jesus. He took the righteousness of Jesus and put it upon you. Somebody say amen. Amen. That's what he did. Let me show you some scriptures. Let me show you some scriptures. So that you will go and do Bible study yourself and know that it's not by crying. Because some of you, God has forgiven you, but you are the one that has not forgiven yourself. You are saying, I want to be, I want to be, I want to show God that I'm really sorry. So I'm going to I'm going to just not pray for three years or three months so that God will know that I'm really sober. Well done, sister, sober. <laughs> well done. 
Because some of you think that it is by doing, but that Nicodemus, Nicodemus, <laughs> eh? Sister Like, you didn't read the Bible, you didn't get the memo. Your sins I will not remember. Mm. He decided that concerning you, as soon as you accept Jesus, he wipes the slate clean, develops a selective amnesia. He does not remember your sins. You are the one saying, you know, we are so sin conscious that even when you start that life cannot be built until you understand the doctrine of righteousness. It cannot be built. You will be doing falling and rising. And God is like, hey, hey, look at this guy. You get for whom I die. Still wasting time crying over something that we have cleaned. Your mess has been cleaned. Hallelujah. Amen. You thought Jesus was joking to come and God became man. They spat upon him. They slapped him. They buffeted him. You, you think God was joking? The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He came to pay for your sins so that you will not pay. Why are you paying for something that Jesus has paid? That Jesus has paid for this thing. You are given the credit of righteousness. You are blessed, happy to be envied. He is a person of whose sin the Lord will not take account. Because some of you, what you are thinking is that in heaven now, God is just writing your name in the book of life and canceling it. You cancel it today and tomorrow when you do good. You start do good in our eyes again. So next tomorrow, when you do bad, they cancel it again. They wrote your name in the book of life with pencil. Praise God. <laughs> That's what a lot of people think, you know. That's not the way it works. It's a price that was paid once and for all. Once and for all. So don't allow your self righteousness to deny you of the gift of righteousness. It is a gift. Isaiah 64 verse 6 So when we display our righteous deeds They are nothing but filthy rags Like autumn leaves We wither and fall and all our sins Sweep us away like the wind It's terrible Don't even bring up your self-righteousness before God No flesh will glory in his presence Nobody will come and say ah, God you see I tried Do you remember the story of those two guys that went to pray in the temple One was a Pharisee How many of you remember The Pharisee said Lord I fast twice a week. I pay my tithe. Because some people think that the things they do, that's how their credit in heaven is rated. Excuse me, sir. Your credit report in heaven is not like your Canada credit report. <laughs> it's not. Son of God. The story of redemption is that the Son of God became a Son of Man so that the sons of men can become the sons of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. That's the technology of God. It's a simple gospel. You need a pastor to confuse you. <laughs> are you listening to me? It's a simple thing. The simplicity of the gospel is why some people are not born again. You know, a lot of us, we prefer the hard way. And I developed a sermon and I thought to you, the easy way, the only way. Because what you know is the hard way, the only way. God decided to make it easy so that none of us will miss it. That's what he did in Jesus. You know, if you like the hard life, Professor Hard Life, you believe that act if you get around now, you should roll on the ground, they should in fact cut your leg. So it paid. So why should I call myself wretched when somebody's righteousness has been credited into my account? And we see the alert. The alert is revelation. The entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. The moment you receive an alert on your phone, you can rejoice. Because that thing that you received on your phone is true. There is money in your account. Even though you didn't see the cash, right? When you receive an alert on your phone, did you see the cash? No. What you saw was just you saw. 2 Corinthians 5.21 I'm reading the Passion Translation. For God made the only one, the only one, this is the only one who did not know sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us so that we might become what? The righteousness of God through the very first principles of God's word. You have come to need milk, not solid food. For every 
anyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. There is a doctrine of righteousness. It is conformity to the divine will in purpose, in thought, in action. The Bible says he's a mere infant. He cannot talk yet. Go and read Amplified Classic. He said he cannot talk. You cannot have a voice in this kingdom. Why you still speak by your own righteousness? The only way God hears your voice is that you are speaking from Christ. So when you say, I am a sinner, except you are confessing your sin for the first time. When you say, I am a sinner, God only hears your prayer for forgiveness. But when you say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, what God hears is no longer your voice. It is the voice of Jesus. Did you get that? It is the voice of Jesus. So your life is in in Christ, in God. If you stand up today and you make an appearance and my name is told that they will be like, who is that? Receive the gift. Some of you, you don't like soft life. You like hard life. You go to the till, someone say, let me pay for you. You say, no, no. I'm going to pay for myself. And you know that in your accounts, there is nothing there. Let them pay for you. Jesus has paid. Ah, this thing is exciting. Anytime I think about it, in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so blessed. Because he thou shouldest mark iniquity. Who? Let me ask your neighbor, say, can you stand? Can you stand? If God takes his pen and begins to mark it, wrong thoughts, you look at somebody's Brazilian with your life, that should have been mine. It's not even fitting. And look at her head. You just go. <laughs> Are you listening to me? You are driving on the road, you just see somebody, you just put on his dark shades and he's just driving with one arm. And what he's driving is a Porsche. And you, you are driving a Dodge Caravan. And your mind is like, nonsense. You don't even know where to get money from. <laughs> God marks it again. So you're wrong. Then you move a step further. You see another person who is dressed in a terrible stiletto, sharp suit, everything is dry, on point. We are not even talking about fornication yet. We are just talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> These ones, they are not the, according to you, they are not the big scenes, right? These ones are just the things in your mind that you are just thinking. You just look at him and say, who does who keep a guy? <laughs> <laughs> this man too is, is putting on suit. Look, look at him. God back. Because when he came to David's house, he said through the prophet, you look at the face, but I, I look at him. He searches the act and the reins. He tries you in your most innermost stuff. And when he judged you, he said you are not qualified. That's why he sent himself. You know, Jesus is not the representative of God. He is God himself. He came out. God came out of God and came to pay the price that man couldn't pay. Then in law, there is what is called the technicality of justice. If you appear before my court as a judge, and all the laws are against you, but you are my son. I want the judgment to be in your favor. I can go into the laws and bring up a technicality that will knock out your condemnation. Mm -hmm. That's why some cases you just had that they did not send this person to prison. You are like, that's my God that he did. Uh, that's the technicality of the law. Mm -hmm. So only God could have done what he did in Jesus. He is a righteous God, so he has to punish sin, but he's also a loving father. He has to save his son. Because man is his son. So what he did in Jesus is that you couldn't pay. So God stepped out of God. God appeared on earth. The, the word became flesh. The word that was from the beginning with God became flesh and died for us. He began to walk in the neighborhood. God now put the iniquity of us all. He poured it on himself. He punished himself. Then he now said, you, you are free to go. No, you can't beat him too. This deal that I'm bringing to you, Superstore does not have it. You're not getting what I'm talking about. You can't get this deal in Walmart. <laughs> you cannot, there is no market in the world where you can get this deal. There is no court of justice in the world where you can get this deal. God punished himself and then says, you, you are free. You're like, so the problem now is that some of you are still shocked that you are free. You know somebody can be free and he's still short. He's been tied down for so long. So when they lose the rope and say go, he, he's just immobile. Yeah. He can't go. I came to set you free this morning. Whatever tied you down will let you go. Yeah. This is the real deliverance. The reason why some
some people are going for it again and again is because they have not come to the doctrine of righteousness that they are free. You are not bound anymore. You are free. You can walk away today. 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 You can stand up and take a walk and say, I'm walking away from troubles. You can walk away today. You are not. Stop trying. Every time you say, stop trying. Stop trying. Receive the gift. Abba. Abba. <coughs> you don't know. You are righteous. It's a credit. God has given you the credit of God's righteousness. You don't understand the price. The one that knew no sin was made sin so that you could become the righteousness of God. Let me show you the scripture. Romans chapter 3. I'm going to quickly wrap up. We're not going to Genesis 27. Because there are so many scriptures that talks about what Christ has done for you. And if you get it, you are part. Romans chapter 3 from verse 21 to 24. Romans 3, 21 to 24. We're going to read the message version. He said, but in our time, something new has been added. What Moses and the prophet witnessed to all those years. This is what prophet Moses and all the prophets in the Bible, this is what they were talking about. The God setting things right that we read about has become Jesus setting things right for us. And not only for us, but for everyone who believes in him. For there is no difference between us and them in this. Since we have compared this long and sorry record as sinners, both us and them, and prove that we are utterly incapable. Do you see that? We are utterly incapable of living the glorious life that God wills for us. God now did it for us. Praise God. We are, we are utterly incapable of living the life that God wants us to live. So God now did it for us. Who did it for us? God. Oh, say it loud. I said, who did it for us? God. It's not your uncle. Who did it for us? God. God did it for us. Out of sheer generosity, he put us. Did you see that? He put us in right standing with himself. Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, a pure gift. It's a gift. It's not a dream. It's a pure gift. He got us out of the mess we are in and restored us to where we always wanted to be. And he did it by means of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. He did it. So, you see, salvation is not God give 50%. You, you now brought 50%. We're not mobilizing God. Salvation is God give it 100%. I receive it as a gift. Because the reason why you have not been able to receive it up till now is that you are trying to mix the law with grace. But it does not work like that. God did it 100%. So when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. He wasn't joking. I paid the full price. Everything. So when the devil stands up to bring accusation against you, Jesus shows up and says, Father, we paid the price. Everything. Nothing remaining. We are not owing anything on this guy. As soon as you believe, the credit has it. been done, yeah. but you only engage it when you believe. Yeah. Don't let the devil steal your job. Amen? Amen. Yeah. yeah, please, yeah. don't let the devil steal. The devil has no power, but his wisdom is what has become his power. We are not ignorant of the devices. His wild, his subtlety. What he came to do to Adam in Eden, he said, see, reject the righteousness of God. You will become like God. Are you stupid? You are made in the image of God. You don't need to become like what you have been made. Mm -hmm. The same test was what he brought to Jesus in Matthew. If you are the son of God, I am the son of God, I don't need to prove it to you, my brother. I am the son of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am the healed of God. I don't need to do something. I just need to believe that the father says I am the son. Because before he came to that temptation, a voice burst out of heaven. God speaking says, this is my beloved son in whom I will be. So Jesus was not in doubt. Then why are you in doubt? You are his beloved son. He used to be before that Jesus was the only begotten. But after he died, he's no longer the only. Praise God. Oh, yeah. He's no longer the only. In him, we are now sons. We are the sons of God. Say to yourself, say, I am the son of God. I'm the son of God. And sonship is not gender. Sonship is inheritance. Did you hear that? Sonship 
in God's kingdom is not gender, it is inheritance. Your ability to take what God has done in Christ is what they call sonship. Take it. Let's go to Genesis 27 so that we wrap it up. I want to show you something this morning. Genesis 27. There are many scriptures there, but maybe we'll continue next week. I want to show you Genesis 27, the, the identity issue. So when you read the Bible, you must understand that beyond the story that you are reading, the text is actually richer than that. God in the Old Testament was using imperfect actors to act out the story of redemption. Are you following me? So for instance, when you see God saying, take your son Isaac and go to the mountain and sacrifice him, he was not going to eat the flesh of Isaac. There was nothing he wanted to do with it. What he was doing there was that he was acting out a script from heaven. But you see, uh, heaven's language is so rich that human beings cannot accurately interpret it. So when, uh, when Abraham got to the mountain and put his son there and he wanted to kill him, then the angel said, don't put your hand upon the lad." And then there was an animal that was caught in the bush, right? In the same way that the crown of thorns was placed on the head of Jesus, that was how that ram was caught in the air by thorns of bushes. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? So God now said to Abraham, don't kill your child because if you kill Isaac, the sacrifice of Isaac can never please the heart of God completely. You cannot give a man to God. You can only give God to God for it to be acceptable. You don't get it. See, working with a spirit is a high thing. That's why those who serve the devil, he always collects the best things from them. The things that matter to them. Spirits are jealous. Spirits are possessive. Well, see, because they operate in a different realm. It's just like somebody is in Nigeria. You are in Canada. The amount of naira that that person in Nigeria needs to send to you to make up to your Canadian equivalent is... You know what I'm talking about. If somebody wants to send you ten thousand dollars from Nigeria today, he's going to send you millions. You are collecting it in thousand, but in his mind, he has sent a lot of money. But when you change the thing, the converter is like nonsense. This is all you send. But for him, he sent a lot. That's why God cannot take your human righteousness to please Himself. The conversion rate of what you are sending from up to heaven, by the time the central bank of heaven converts it, it is nonsense. So that's what he was talking about. All your righteousness is as filthy rag. You get the point now? Mm -hmm. Get it. This, ah, hey, when we first came and we converted our naira to dollar, every time we did it, we felt sad. Because the value is, and it was still good then. Now I'm talking of 200 dollar to one dollar. So imagine somebody now converting that thing. <laughs> you convert it, you feel bad. That's the way heaven feels. Every time they convert your righteousness and they put it on the scale of heaven, now I found one thing. Never enough. It will never be enough. So you've got to accept the heavenly gift of grace. That's what they can present in heaven. So, in Genesis 27, what we saw was the case of two brothers, Isaac and Jacob. The father said, I want you to read this story when you get to but I'm just going to run through it and tell you the identity crisis. The father said to his oldest son, Esau, I want to bless you. Go to the field, right? Go and walk, also, and get me an animal. Cook it, make it sweet, and bring it to me, so that my heart will bless you. Hey, the guy is like, man, this is an opportunity for the blessing, right? Meanwhile, he sold his battery. This is an opportunity for the blessing. He took up, got his arrow and cutlass, and dashed to the bush. He was running, kitty kitty, running, kata kata. He didn't know that it is not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. See the Lord. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Somebody shout, mercy. mercy! If God does not show you mercy, your machine is a waste. Mm. If God does not show you mercy, your money is a waste. Yeah. If God does not show you mercy, anything that starts with the in your life is still a waste. Mm. Somebody say, mercy. mercy. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will show compassion to whom I will show compassion. It is compassion, not not green, green, not blah, blah. It's not power. 
So he dashed out to the bush. When he went, Elizabeth came out. The counselor of Isaac. Praise God. Because you must understand that in the theology of God, man and his wife, they are one. I'm teaching something deep here. Man and his wife, they are not two, they are one. Right? So when the father says, I want to bless you, and this one ran to the bush, the mistake he saw made is thinking that by the arm of the flesh he could please the father. What he should have done is to go to the mother. Because people say, oh, his uh, his son has been cooking the food for him from before. If he had been cooking it before, he would have gotten the blessing. It is Rebecca who was the chief, the chief chef. She was the one that has, you don't get it, all the recipe game. If this thing that Isaac is talking about is from Rebecca's kitchen. Rebecca is the manufacturer of the recipe that is pleasing. Are you getting it now? You, you cannot cook for God and God will take it. It will never be sweet. It is only Jesus that can cook for God and God will say, it is pleasing. You know, on the month of transfiguration, three people showed up. Jesus was there. Elijah, the prophet, showed up. Moses, the Lord, also showed up. <laughs> and then, Uncle Peter, you know Peter? Peter, the trouble with us. Peter said, it is good for us to be here. Let us build one tabernacle for the law. And then we build one tabernacle for the prophet. And as he was talking, everyone just said, shut up, shut up. A voice came out of heaven. He interrupted him and said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye, ye. In Christianity, we don't operate by the law of Moses. We don't operate by the prophecies of Elijah. We operate by the mercies of Jesus. We operate by the grace of Christ. We operate by the righteousness that Jesus procured for us. So when they opened their eyes, they just saw that Moses had disappeared. Elijah had disappeared. Unfortunately, in the church today, Elijah and Moses, they are still very strong members of the world. In the church, the, the, the reason why religion is strong is because people are not really in the gospel. They are mixing the gospel and the law. The Bible says the law and the prophets were until. They are no longer there. They were until. So you cannot say, I will do the law to please God. This righteousness is not by law. It is righteousness by faith. Maybe next week I will show you some other scriptures. Go and read Romans chapter 4. What Abraham found is not righteousness by law. It is not righteousness by circumcision. It is righteousness by believing. We believe to righteousness. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. He did not say we can just unto righteousness. Praise God. We confess unto salvation. Some of you, you are trying to do unto righteousness. Sister Dumebi, there is nothing you do that is pleasing to the Lord. Stop it. Believe the finished work of Christ for you. Are you getting me this one? So, Esau ran out. Instead of running into his, his mother's kitchen, he ran out. Everything that takes, that takes you out of God to go and struggle on your own is stress. Did you hear that? That labor and a heavy lady, I will give you rest. Stop running to the bush. There is nothing you're going to kill there that will meet up with the blessing of the Father. Mm. So let me wrap. As soon as Esau left, let me get up. As soon as Esau left, face it, as soon as he left and went out, Elizabeth called Jacob and said, Jackie, is that not? Come. Praise God. Jackie, he said, Yes, mom, come. Your father is about to release the blessing. And maybe I should take one minute and just prophesy upon you that this week you will experience the blessings of the Lord. Your father is about to release the blessing. And this is what you are going to do. You are going to take two goats from the backyard. The goats that is pleasing, the raw material from which they make this aroma, this sweet thing that he, he, this father wanted to eat and bless is in the backyard. What you are running to go and get in the field is in the backyard. 
The righteousness that some of you are trying to possess by the labor of arm is in the backyard. So he said to Jacob, she said to Jacob, go and get two goats. And if you are a student of the Bible, you will know two goats. Two goats and in Leviticus chapter 16. Every time Israel or you wanted to make a sacrifice in the Old Testament, you will bring two goats. And I don't have the time to show you two goats all through the scriptures. Even in the New Testament, there were two goats. Jesus was made the scapegoat. Barabbas was the other goat that was released. Are you following? The Bible is a very rich, rich text. You cannot read it like you are reading newspaper. Two goats. When you want to sacrifice, you will take two goats. They will make one a scapegoat. One will be sacrificed for you. So the mother said, go and get two goats. They slaughtered the blood. You see the blood? This is the blood again. The blood. The blood. They cut those goats and all of that. Then Jacob said, excuse me, mommy. Hmm. Let it not be that when I show up there, instead of blessing, I will now use my head to carry costs. Because I am not like Esau. Esau is hairy, but I am smooth skin. Yeah. And I will show you the technology of God again. How that in, in, in redemption, you don't appear by yourself. You put on Jesus. Are you listening to me? You put on, that's why Paul would say, put on Christ. We put on the righteousness of God, not our own righteousness. So when the mother, they killed the goat, they took the hair from the goat. They put it on the hands of Jacob, put it on the neck of Jacob, and also told Jacob, go and get the coat of your brother. This is the skin that God put upon Adam instead of the leaves. Go and get the coat of your brother and wear it. So suddenly this guy that was smooth skin became a so when, if you met Jacob at that point, you'll be wondering, bros, how did you become this here? It is a miracle of grace. Are you following me? I want you to get this thing, because this is an identity crisis we are dealing with. You are saying, Lord, I, 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 I have anger issues. God is saying, put on Jesus Christ. If you put on Jesus Christ, we will not see your smooth skin. All that we will see is Jesus. I have lost. He said, put on Jesus Christ. If you put on Jesus, we will not see your smooth skin. We will see your hairy skin. So the kill the goat, cooked it, that sacrifice on his own. That's what sacrifice. Everything that you see Jesus doing on the cross of Calvary, that's what Rebecca was doing in the courtyard of Isaac. Kill the goat, made it sweet smelling aroma. Then he told Jacob, you just wear because the person that God, the Father wanted to bless is Esau. Mm -hmm. And for you to get the blessing, you cannot appear as Jacob. Mm -hmm. Child of God, stop appearing as yourself. You cannot get God's approval by appearing as you are. You must appear in Jesus. Are you following me? You appear in Jesus. So when we say we are praying in the name of Jesus, it is not what we say, it is what we believe. Are you listening to me? Now, because some of you think that until you say in Jesus' name, that's why many prayers that you end up with in Jesus' name, they don't get answered. Because even though you said it with your mouth, you don't understand what you're saying. In Jesus' name means I take on the righteousness of Jesus. And that is why I can stand before the Father to pray. Make sense to you? I take up, so when I'm praying, the only reason because we know that God does not hear sinners. That's the scripture. God does not. The one that God hears is his son. Right? So we enter in, you must, you must be a good actor in Christianity. Because what we are doing is called role play. You are taking the character of Jesus. You are bringing it before the Father. We appear as Jesus. The reason why God answers you is not because you cry <laughs> or you fasted for 40 days. No. It's because you came in the name of Jesus. The only account that they honor, the only check they honor in heaven is from Jesus. So if you get his check and tender it, heaven will answer. So Jacob decked up himself. That's how God wants you to walk. Decked up in the righteousness of Jesus. You are putting on Christ. 
You are not coming with condemnation and guilt. Praise God. You are coming with the consciousness of sonship. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the son of the father. Jesus is in me glorified. I am in him justified. I appear in the court of heaven. You know the Bible said concerning Esther that she put on her royal apparel and appeared before the king. And because of that, the king stretched forth his rock. His rock. Don't appear like yourself. You will incur judgment. Anytime you show up as yourself, you cannot even go through the gate of heaven. You cannot. They will not open for you because they don't know you. The only one that can enter through that place is Jesus. So you must learn how to put on Christ. The consciousness of his righteousness is what we bring to the Father. And say, Lord, it is not because of my fasting. Because well, some of you think it is by fasting. It's not because I gave offering. No. God doesn't spend dollars. Are you aware of that? Yes. Even the one that has a uh, son in pound style, God doesn't spend it. <laughs> the only thing that God answers to is Jesus. Yeah. He cannot see Jesus and turn away his face. Are you listening to me? God cannot turn away from God. The only time he did it was because Jesus became our sin. And for the first time in the history of Jesus, he called God, God. Every other place in the Bible, he called God, Father. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It was because he had become iniquity and the Father could not behold iniquity. Am I teaching you this morning? So Jacob wore his and appeared before the Father. How come you have gotten it so quickly? He said, The Lord your God. He brought it to me. It's not the guy that was in the field at that point. Or the antelope, they were still running away. He will focus on this. See that if the one has escaped. We will always fall short. We will never be good enough. Trust me. We will never in ourselves. That's why Paul says, we are not of them that have confidence in the flesh. He said, we are the true circumcision. We worship God in the spirit. And we have no confidence in the flesh. The believer is not strong in himself. He's strong in Christ. Are you following me this morning? We are only strong in Christ. So when you go before the Father, the Father said, go and read that scripture when you get home. The Father said, are you my son, Esau? Are you listening to me? Yes. That man was blind, but he was not there. Mm. The voice of Jacob betrayed him. <laughs> you are not getting it. Are you getting it? I mean, I have children now, by the grace of God. Even in my sleep, if they speak, I can pick up their voice. So imagine a voice that he has had for all his years. Jacob said, I, I am here, my father, the food is ready. Oh. It is man is like so you think because I'm not blind. You know justice is blind, right? Yeah. God is deliberate in making justice blind. So that he does not look at you. Are you following that? Yeah. He does not look at you, he looks at your case. So when you hire a good attorney and the attorney knows the law, he can use the law to your advantage. What they were doing here was they were using the technicality of the law to their advantage. He knew that that was Jacob speaking. So he asked the question again. Are you my son Esau? That's where some of you fail. You know what i I want to confess. I am not your son Esau. I am actually Jacob. It is my mother that said I should come. You will be cursed. <laughs> Every time they ask you the question. Are you my son Esau? What's your answer? Yes. I am your son, Esau. I am your son, Jesus. Because what the Father wants to see is not you, is Jesus. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, stop confessing your shortness. Stop confessing your weakness. Confess Jesus. Jesus is our profession. It's our confession. So we say what Jesus said. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. They will say there is a casting down, but you, you have a different confession. There is a lifting up. 
Yeah. I'm not a sinner, I'm a saint. If you call yourself a wretched sinner, congratulations. President General among the sinners. We have been made the righteousness of God. I am your son, Esau. I am the one. Okay, so if you are the one, come, come close. Come close. Come close. And then he went close. Then the father touched him. Praise God. He felt him. God wants to feel you. If you wear Jesus, he cannot know that it is you. And when he felt him, he said, It is the voice of Jacob. Mm, I know. So you see, the father was not done. He had the voice clearly. When you come to God, God knows it is you. But if you put on Jesus, he will do it because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Eh? I have joy overflow. It is in Jesus that we live. It is in him that we move. It is in him that we have our being. The believer's life is in Christ. Jesus is our identity. That's why what we preach is Jesus and him crucified. It is not you and what you have done right. It is Jesus and his redemptive work upon the cross. So the father blessed him. And when Jacob left brother Esau king, for when he came, it was too late. That's what you call your righteousness. Self-righteousness is not enough. If God waits for your self-righteousness in that story, Isaac will have died before Esau brought the food. You don't get it. Yeah. He will have died before he brought the food. But Rebecca, in Rebecca's kitchen, the recipe was accurate. In Rebecca's kitchen, the goats were there. She didn't need to go to the bush. The goats were already there. Sharply, sharply, they did the thing. Gave it to the father. Man chopped and blessed. And that's why Jacob became Israel. And we are the true Israel of God. Because this thing is not works, it is faith. So everyone that believes in the righteousness of Jesus takes on the nature of God. And you can boldly say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is your identity. Let me tell you, they will say that is your identity. You say, yeah, but pastor, I'm still dealing with stuff. Even we, we are coming from stuff. You know, people say, I'm going through a lot. Even we, we are coming from a lot. Everybody was at one point or the other dealing with something. This is not a place for hypocrisy or religion. It's a place where we are joined in life union with Jesus. And as the life of Jesus flows through you, you become the person that he wants you to be. Amen. 